Tillerson and uh, I'm making this how-to video uh, on behalf of BoostedFilms.com. Um, you should check out for more information, uh, more tutorials, more how-tos, and a new DVD that's just released. This is meant to show how I remove my transfer case. Um, you can perform this at your own risk. I just wanted to basically give people a general idea of what to expect when removing their transfer case. Now, ACD transfer case is a little different than a non-ACD, but for the most part, um, if you have non-ACD, it just should be a little bit easier for you. So here we go. We're starting off by obviously putting the car up on a hoist. I definitely recommend using a hoist. You can use jack stands, but it's going to make it a lot harder. Uh, you put the car up on the hoist, and you will remove uh, the front two wheels. And now you can see I'm removing the brake calipers, then the brake rotors. Uh, and then I wired up my brake calipers to the strut just to keep them out of the way. And after that, uh, you'll remove uh, the big uh, nut holding on your uh, CV shaft. Uh, you'll have to remove a cotter pin first, and then you can remove that nut. I also recommend using air tools for this if you have the option. Next you're going to want to drain uh, the fluid from your transmission and the fluid from your transfer case. Um, this part of the video is just showing you exactly what it looks like underneath uh, before we start getting everything removed. You can see we're going to have to remove the cross member there, we're going to have to remove the exhaust. Um, the other brackets there we're going to have to remove as well. And also, my car already had the plastic shields removed from underneath. You might have to remove that ahead of time too. Uh, next, we're going to remove uh, the strut uh, from both sides. We're not totally remove it, but we're going to loosen the strut and move it out of the way so we can get our CV shafts out. Anytime that uh, you remove your strut, you're going to have to get a front end alignment once you take those bolts out. Uh, and next we're going to pull out the CV shaft. Obviously you're going to want to do this on both sides, remove both CV shafts. Um, here's a slide hammer demonstration. Of, this is how I used the slide hammer to remove the, the shaft on the driver's side. You do not need to remove the passenger side input shaft. You can leave that one in um, if you're swapping transfer cases completely. Um, if you need the shaft out of it, obviously then you have to remove it when it's on the ground, so it might be easier to remove it when it's in the car. Alright, and next we're going to remove uh, the braces underneath. There's two uh, cross cross braces, if you will, that would need to be removed. Now we're going to loosen up the downpipe so we can get that out of our way. Uh, if you have an exhaust stand or something to hold up your exhaust, uh, that's good. Otherwise, you might need to just use some wire and wire it up out of the way. Also, those bolts probably didn't break loose as easy as it's shown there. I might have cut some of that out. <laughs> but uh, some of the bolts can be really tight holding your exhaust downpipe to your O2 housing. I believe after the exhaust is out of the way, we're going to move on to removing the drive shaft, which I didn't show in the video, but I recommend uh, putting a mark on the drive shaft where the two halves meet that you're going to take apart. Uh, you can mark it so that you can line up the same bolt hole so it goes back the same way it came out. So there's four bolts that you're going to have to remove uh, in the back part of the drive shaft to separate the drive shaft piece and then you'll be able to pull the drive shaft piece out and if you drained all the fluid from your transfer case there shouldn't be too much fluid that comes out once you pull it out next we're going to remove uh, the cross member here uh, and the motor mount, you're going to have to remove them the lower front motor mount, 
that connects to the cross member to get the cross member completely out of the way. And now I'm just going to go through and show you what it looks like with everything out of the way. There's a transfer case still bolted up to the transmission. And you can see we've basically cleared everything out of the way. Now we're going to remove the tailstock part of the transfer case. I didn't try to even remove the transfer case without taking off this tailstock part because I'm pretty sure the way I got it out it wouldn't have worked unless I removed this, this tailstock piece. So I'll remove the four bolts holding the tailstock on and then you should be able to get the transfer case out the same way I did. Uh, once we got that out of the way, once we got the tailstock off, we can loosen up uh, the bolts holding the transfer case uh, to the transmission. And now we skipped ahead a little bit. I got I got the transfer case a little bit loose there. And now I'm zooming into the bolts. These are the subframe bolts that I loosened up just to lower the subframe a little bit. Uh, there's one on each side that I just loosened. And next I'm showing uh, the ACD line. Once the camera finds it here, there's the ACD line uh, that goes onto the top of the transfer case. So yeah, you can see the socket there. And I'm taking off the loosening up the ACD line. Now this is where it gets rather tricky. It's really good to have a second person for this. If you can see where the pry bar is right there behind the transmission, what I'm doing is prying the transmission forward. I'm actually, or the whole motor forward with my leg. <laughs> I'm using my leg to move the whole engine, rock the whole engine forward while I try to wiggle the transfer case out of there. And it takes a while to get figured out here, as you can see. So I didn't have to remove any motor mounts besides that front one. Uh, I didn't have to remove the back one, the top one, anything like that. I was able to just pry the whole motor with the pry bar. I was able to move the whole motor enough to wiggle it out of there. So that's it, that's the removal. Obviously install is the same, <laughs> but reversed. So I didn't videotape the whole install, I just figured I'd give you guys a good idea of how to get it removed. Also I just wanted to say that when you put the spec together, you want to make sure that you look up the torque specs for everything and torque it to the proper foot pounds. This, I know when bleeding the transfer case it doesn't require uh, very much fluid actually, it doesn't go through very much at all. What you end up doing is turning the key to the on position and then um, pressing the gas pedal all the way down on the ground and then you'll hear the pump run for a couple seconds. And this is kind of the process of bleeding it out. You could have someone in your car to turn the key on and press the gas pedal down when you open the bleeder um, that's located directly on the bottom of the transfer case. And also a uh, very important notice when you have your new transfer case put in. Uh, when you're checking the fluid level, when you add your uh, diaqueen, you'll want to make sure that you check your fluid level at least three or four times because mine filling it up with a pump, uh, I pumped in as much as I could and then, and then I plugged it. And then once I pulled the plug again, there wasn't anything running out. So I repeated that process probably about four times before it was actually full. You know, every time I get like two, three more pumps in, and it would start coming out, so then I'd put the plug in, and then I waited a couple of minutes and pull the plug again, and then there was nothing coming out. So you want to keep filling it up until you get the fluid running out, and obviously you want to make sure you do that on level ground, so you want to get your card as level as possible. This video was presented by BoosterFilms.com, so if you want to check out the, our website, that'd be great. Uh, we got a new DVD available that's really cool, full of full of a lot of Evo action. If you're into autocrossing and lapping days and drag racing and all that stuff, you can check that out. And if you are interested in any other tutorials or want to suggest some, go ahead and go 
uh, to boostedfilms.com or post on a forum. If you found this on a forum, go ahead and uh, post up what you want to see, do a video tutorial of, and uh, we'll see what we can do.